What's happening, man? This big call, you feel me? Uh, and this video is by Top Trending, I think. Yeah, Top Trending. It is 10 biggest things that were stolen. All right, so in the thumbnail, we see a boat or whatever, a cruise ship. Draw to think a big thing stolen. And I ain't gonna lie to you, I can't think. But I need y'all to pause the video and put down now some big things that y'all think will be on this list. Anyways, we're gonna see what they talking about. Most thieves steal small items that are easy to carry. Whether shoplifting from a store or burglarizing a home, these criminals know that it's important to steal things that are relatively inconspicuous. But sometimes thieves pull off a legendary heist that leaves the authorities scratching their heads. Today, we're looking at the biggest things ever stolen. I was going to say a plane, but I'm like, well, how do you steal a plane? Aircraft, registered you know what I'm AA, took off from Cuatro de Febrero Airport in Luanda, Angola. Well. <laughs> Not such an unusual event, except that nobody knew for certain who was at the controls. Clearance for takeoff was not requested or given. In effect, the Boeing had been stolen from under the noses of air traffic control. To this day, this remains one of the strangest unexplained mysteries in aviation. Neither the aircraft nor the two reported occupants on board at the time have been seen since. The story goes <laughs> like this. Not. The pilot and an engineer boarded the 727 around 5 of p.m. Not. the time. This was already atypical because it takes at least three people to fly the plane. Allegedly, there was another passenger on board, but this has been disputed. The plane then began making strange transmissions to air traffic control and swerving erratically around the tarmac. Without turning its lights on, the plane took off over the Atlantic Ocean and was never seen again. Unlike other airplane disappearances, no debris was ever found, prompting some to believe that the theft resulted in the sale of the airplane. To this day, conspiracies abound. Some say that the plane was stolen in order to pay for someone's ransom. Others think it was sighted in Conakry, Guinea, mere months after the disappearance, with a new paint job a florida man was arrested in 2012 for smuggling stolen dot bro y'all gonna stop sizing us like that every time some stupid stuff happens something stupid happened they gotta be a floridian dinosaur <laughs> bones into the u.s from we China, do a lot of stupid them stuff, but this, this is million dollars, according okay, to federal stupid, officials. And the New York <laughs> one million, hey, I feel it too. <laughs> you hear me? To stop the sale. Nearly a thousand miles away in Florida, Eric Prokopi, the man who had obtained the bones from a Mongolian dealer and painstakingly prepared them for sale, paced the beach where he was celebrating his daughter's birthday. He was waiting for the auctioneer's hammer to finalize the sale and its consequences. Prokopi, who describes himself as a commercial paleontologist, put the skeleton up for sale in the U.S. with a Texas-based auction house. In his description of the skeleton, he wrote that the dinosaur ruled the food chain of the ancient floodplains that are today's Gobi Desert. He purchased the T-Rex, which is 80% complete, on the black market in Mongolia and realized that he had something extremely valuable on his hands. Then he made the mistake of selling illegal goods in an extremely public setting. Lawyers in New York quickly noticed this mistake and pounced on him. It turns out that the bones had already been claimed by a group of potential buyers, including Nicolas Cage. The case only resulted in three months of prison for Prokopi. An old Japanese couple cared deeply for the collection of trees that were stolen from them in 2019. The couple took to social media to share detailed care instructions with the thieves they say stole seven bonsai trees from them, including one tree over 400 years old. The miniature trees, reportedly taken from a garden in the prefecture of Saitama, north of Tokyo dang, last month, are... They ain't say oldest, they say biggest. The miniature trees... Collectively worth at least one... $65,000, according to CNN. Tree, the distraught owners say they were still that. hopeful their tree babies would be returned, but implored the thieves to take proper care of them. The raid is believed to be the work of professional bonsai thieves who knew exactly what they were looking for. She explained the 400-year-old stolen tree had been taken from a mountain centuries ago by her husband's family, who shrunk it to its current form of one meter tall and around 70 centimeters wide. We treated these miniature trees like our children, she said. This heartbreaking tale is still unraveling. It yeah, seems that, that it would require um, a good Samaritan big. recognizing these trees on the black or market to reunite these family originally treasures with their original big owners. Tree. Until then, they simply hope that the thieves know how to care for these highly specialized plants. In 2005, a 3,000 pound bell was miraculously stolen from a Vietnamese Buddhist temple near Tacoma, Washington. The 12 foot tall bell was stolen during the night, meaning that it must have involved a carefully planned attack from a group of strong people. I think the people who stole it wanted to make money, but they never thought about the significance of it and how important it is in the practice of Buddhism, a Buddhist monk said, speaking with the help of an interpreter. Three years later, the bell was found as part of a sting operation against a known criminal in the Tacoma area, but they found much more than the stolen bell. 
Investigators have recovered nine guns, some of them stolen, as well as six stolen cars, two stolen tow trucks, a stolen tractor, two stolen flatbed the trucks, new car engines stolen. and wooden crates, some eagle talons, How an eagle's hell? head, and four cases of pseudoephedrine, a key ingredient in making methamphetamine. Slightly damaged, oh, but generally in good condition, hey. the bell was returned a year and ten months later by a man who had bought it at an auction. Yeah, they out of gas. A church was left open to the elements after thieves stole 90% of the lead roof. They caused an estimated 225,000 pounds of damage at minimum after targeting the building in Bedfordshire, England. Just parishioners began raising funds Just in 2018 the for the work as their insurance is only expected to pay out about 15,000 pounds. The latest crime comes as the rising price of metal has seen thefts from church roofs increase by a third over the past mm. two years, with incidents now averaging 37 a month in Bedfordshire County. Jeff Hodson of All Saints Parochial Church Council said, We are all pretty heartbroken and shattered, but to be honest, we are not 100% surprised, as we have been told there have been others in Derbyshire. Retractable bollards, which were fitted after oil thefts of 1,000 liters in 2012, stopped the vehicles from getting up to the church, but it appears that they lumped it out by hand. There must have been quite a few of them to get it all out. Area the churches began replacing their lead roofs with less expensive steel ones in order to dissuade potential thieves from striking. So they stole the it bridge, turns out scrap bro. metal is valuable enough to justify some pretty extreme robberies. In the same vein as the roof theft comes the story of an entire bridge outside an abandoned settlement that was stolen in early 2019. Uh -huh. Located in a desolate area near the border of Finland in the Arctic region, the bridge was a crucial crossing for the Umber River and was formerly an active railway crossing. Residents realized only days after the theft took place. Photos dating May 16th circulating on Russian social network VK claimed that the central span of the bridge had fallen into the water. In aerial photos taken just 10 days later, Boy, there was no trace the of the section or of any debris. Natural phenomena could not bring down the bridge, wrote the VK page that initially posted the pictures. The page owners noted that a lower bridge nearby had remained intact. Even if you bring in an icebreaker, then it's strange that the lower road bridge nearby wasn't knocked over. The theft of material is estimated at $9,000. Scrap metal has long been attractive to thieves in Russia looking for money, according to the news outlet. There were fewer than 200 maritime pirate attacks in 2016, the lowest level in more than 20 years. Total global incidents declined nearly 22% from 2015 and nearly 60% from 2010 when Somali piracy captured the world's attention. But in 2017, Somali pirates captured headlines again for their brash thievery of an active oil tanker valued at more than $100 million. Mm. Both the size of the vessel and the distance from the coast where the hijackers struck is unprecedented, said Commander Jane Campbell, a spokeswoman for the U.S. 5th Fleet based in Bahrain. It shows how quickly the pirates are adapting. A Somali pirate who said he was in touch with the armed men aboard the tanker said the amount of ransom to demand has not yet been decided. Bilay Hussein told the Associated Press that the armed men had blocked most of the crew in one room and cut off communication lines. Their main concern now is a possible rescue attempt, so that's why all communications were cut off in the afternoon, he said. They have been sailing through the ocean in search for a foreign ship to hijack since yesterday morning and found this ship and boarded it, he said. Foreign fishermen destroyed their livelihoods and deprived them of proper fishing. Now, due to their poverty, they must resort to a life of crime. When a Russian submarine sank at the height of the Cold War, the CIA got help from Howard Hughes and created a fictitious mining operation to snag the vessel at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. That's right, the CIA stole a Russian submarine right from under the Soviet Union's nose. The six-year mission began in 1968, when the Soviet ballistic missile submarine K-129 went missing without explanation somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. In this post-Cuban missile crisis era, both American and Soviet submarines prowled the open seas with nuclear weapons aboard, prepared for potential war. Some reports indicate that the sinking was due to a mechanical error, such as inadvertent missile engine ignition, while the Soviets for a time suspected the Americans of foul play. After two months, the Soviet Union abandoned its search for K-129 and the nuclear weapons it carried. But the United States, which had recently used Air Force technology to locate two of its own sunken submarines, pinpointed the K-129 1,500 miles northwest of Hawaii and 16,500 feet below the surface. According to the declassified CIA history of the project, no country in the world had succeeded in raising an object of this size and weight from such a depth. And so, the mission remains a singular point in military history. What the hell?
Hey, Greg hey. De Silva is a performer from Benin in West Africa who holds the world record for the biggest egg hat in the world. This may seem like a strange distinction, but De Silva was extremely proud of this award until his beloved egg hat was stolen from him in Germany. Mr. De Silva That's was suffering from heat stroke while in the city of Halle when an egg snatcher made off with a hard boiled hat. After he had recovered from his heat stroke, Mr. De Silva went to retrieve the hat from the hospital, but he was left incredulous when he found it was missing. The poor individual was counting on using the hat for a poetic performance later in the day. His legendary piece of headwear had more than 600 eggs in total. Beep. This may they seem hard to beep. believe, but an entire beach was stolen from Jamaica. Hundreds of tons of sand were stolen from Coral Spring Beach in July, the BBC has reported. After much investigation, the Bro, police what? are still baffled by the removal of 500 truckloads of sand from the beach. Detectives say people in the tourism sector could be suspects, because a good beach is seen as a valuable asset to hotels on the Caribbean island. The 0.5 hectare strand was meant to form part of a resort complex costing $108 million. <laughs> what you doing, bro? Its most important feature you... has led to its developers Whatever. putting their plans Come on to the beach, ain't no Illegal sand, sand mining is a problem in Jamaica. The tradition of people building their own homes here means there is a huge demand for the construction material. However, the large volume... All right, bro, so they stole the beach. I ain't never think that was even possible. They came, they came and took all the sand, but that's the end of the video. You feel me? Y'all like, comment, subscribe, share. Let us know what y'all want us to watch next in the comments and stop just conversing. Send videos that we can react to. You feel me? Our social media should be somewhere down there. And I'm going to catch y'all.